Monsieur le Président de la République, je me vois contraint à l'âge de 50 ans de faire valoir mes droits à la retraite comme professeur. Ma maladie a été déterminée par l'excès du travail auquel je me suis livré pendant des années. In October 1872, the chemistry professor Louis Pasteur was weary. Four years earlier, a stroke had left him partially paralyzed on his left side. His family life had also been a series of tragedies. Of his five children, three had died of sicknesses. But Pasteur was retiring from teaching so he could work even harder. The chemist wanted to continue the research that had made him famous. His work on wine and beer had led to the discovery that fermentation was the work of microorganisms. And he had an intuition. Similar organisms, invisible to the naked eye, played a much more important role. What if they were responsible for human illnesses? The idea was revolutionary, and he was determined to explore further. Louis? Mm. Tu ne m'entendais pas? Nous allons dîner. Oui, j'arrive tout de suite. And yet, Pasteur hesitated. He was not a physician. It was not his field. It would take something else to push him onto this terrain. Something, or perhaps someone. A thousand kilometers from Abois, in the little Prussian town of Wolstein, a young country doctor had questions of his own. Allez-y, tendez votre bras. Ça tire. Euh, alors, si ça tire, c'est bien. Vous pouvez vous habiller, Monsieur Carfer. Dr. Robert Koch tended to his patients. Et vos bêtes, comment vont-elles? But it was not his patients oh, that bien, concerned him bien, most. J'en ai perdu trois encore. Toujours le charbon. The doctor was interested in anthrax, a disease that was decimating livestock in the region. As soon as his day was done, Koch was eager to get back to his research. He would spend hours in his makeshift laboratory, staring through the microscope his wife had given him. He wanted to find the cause of this terrible disease. At the time, anthrax was killing hundreds of thousands of domesticated animals in Europe. They would swell up and die in a matter of hours, hemorrhaging black blood. Koch had discovered tiny elongated organisms in the blood of infected animals, bacteria. Could they be the source of the illness? To establish this, they first had to be cultivated and then introduced to a healthy animal. But how? After months of trials, he finally found the solution. J'ai voulu, mais rien à faire. Il m'a dit que pour le docteur, ce serait toujours gratuit. Merci. Koch had discovered that microbes could be cultivated using an ox's eye. <laughs> On dirait que je t'apporte de l'or. <laughs> mais c'est très précieux, tu sais. Dieses Kammerwasser ist steril. The liquid contained in the eye is sterile. Koch drew it out of the ox eyes and used it for his cultures. The advantage of this aqueous humor is that it's rich in nutrients. The bacteria are very happy there and multiply fast. Now he had to perform the second stage, injecting this culture into a healthy animal. Papa, papa, il y a un lapin qui est très malade. Il va venir, ne sois pas si impatient, Gertrude. A few days later, the doctor had the demonstration he hoped for. The rabbit inoculated with his culture had died of anthrax. C'est pas grave, papa. Mais si, c'est grave. 
C'est très grave, même. For the first time in history, this modest country doctor had just proved that disease could be passed on by bacteria. But Koch was not ready for the consequences of his discovery. His findings sent a shockwave through the scientific community. Koch then had to face critics, among them a famous French chemist. La séance est levée. At the Academy of Medicine in Paris, the newly retired Louis Pasteur was enraged. J'ai la traduction complète depuis hier, et ça n'est pas sérieux. Ces conclusions sont pourtant celles que vous suggériez dans vos travaux, Monsieur Pasteur. Bah précisément, il n'en dit aucun mot. Vous trouvez ça normal? C'est vraiment lui, Pasteur. It was in fact Pasteur who was the first to state clearly that disease, like fermentation, was due to microbes. And now this totally unknown doctor claimed to have demonstrated that a microbe caused a disease, in this case anthrax. So Pasteur was not best pleased at seeing his theory proved by a humble doctor. The second catastrophic element was that Koch was German. A decade earlier, Pasteur had been an admirer of Germany. But the war had swept all that away. In July 1870, Napoleon III attacked Bismarck's Prussian forces. But an overconfident and ill-prepared imperial army was cut to shreds in three weeks. On September 2nd, Napoleon III capitulated. France lost Alsace and Lorraine. Pasteur, who was close to the emperor, was distraught. All of my work to my dying day will bear the epigraph, hated for Prussia, revenge, revenge. Deep down, Pasteur was sure the German doctor was right. But he thought his demonstration was lacking. It was the work of an amateur. It was time to carry out a much more rigorous experiment. Vous avez la dernière dilution? La voilà, Monsieur Pasteur. Bien. Eh bien, vous refaites exactement la même chose. Quelques gouttes dans l'urine. Pasteur decided to reproduce Koch's experiment but using his own method. Bien. C'est parfait. Unlike the country doctor, he had a modern laboratory and assistants. And the results were unequivocal. Koch was right. It was indeed the anthrax bacteria which transmitted the disease. But Pasteur wanted to go further. He wanted to solve the mystery of this illness, whose origins remained a mystery. It was a disease which occurred during summer, and there was a strange phenomenon of cursed fields. These were places where outbreaks were recurrent every year, or at least regularly, in the same spot. These places were said to be cursed. You told me that it was to turn right. In summer 1878, Pasteur decided to study this phenomenon in the field. With his new assistant, Dr. Emile Roux, he visited Mr. Manouri, an important farmer in the Chartres region, where anthrax was taking a terrible toll. Pasteur had read Koch's work attentively, and the German had already made significant progress on the issue of cursed fields. In Wolstein, he had discovered that anthrax bacteria produce spores, which appear as shiny round dots. These are dehydrated bacteria, which allowed the disease to remain in hibernation. But that did not explain everything. How could these spores remain for several years in the same fields, despite the wind and rain? Why is the earth the most sombre here? C'est là qu'on enterre les pauvres bêtes, alors évidemment, ça fait de l'engrais. Attendez, M. Monori, vous me dites que vous enterrez les bêtes malades dans le champ Oui. 
Tout le monde fait ça, c'est plus simple. Vous savez, quand vous perdez 30 bêtes d'un coup qui baignent dans leur sang noir, vous n'avez qu'une envie, c'est de les faire disparaître le plus vite possible. Regardez, oh, regardez. Vous voyez Vous comprenez Ces tortillons, monsieur Monoury. Ce sont des vers de terre, monsieur Pasteur. Non, mais je sais bien ce que c'est, monsieur Monoury. Mais c'est peut-être bien plus que ça, voyez-vous Oui. Et ce serait les vers qui remonteraient à la surface. Évidemment. C'est tellement simple. Analysis of the worms would confirm Pasteur's intuition. The mystery of the cursed fields had finally been resolved. It was the earthworms that carried the germs, and which, from the depths, brought this terrible parasite to the surface of the ground. By completing the German doctor's work, the Frenchman's career took a decisive turn. The fight against contagious diseases was underway.